William Moultrie, son of the famous Revolutionary War general, was born and reared near the Broad Path. The rice plantations along Goose Creek supported prosperous families. The Ansley family socialized with ascending Ashley River clans, but Windsor Hill was part of the St. James Goose Creek Parish, and the Moultrie, Moultrie and Ansley families were Broad Path neighbors for more than 80 years. Predictably, a family connection resulted through love and marriage. And this is the home of the, uh, this is a plat. You know, we didn't have photography back then, and so the best you can do is to get a painting, a portrait, or, and of the land if you can get a plat. And this is a plat of the Moultrie's family. This road went out to what's Rivers Avenue today, not too far from Trident Technical College. And the road led into the main house, and then they had a lawn with slave quarters on the, on the Goose Creek side. And then they had a, a path that led into a garden where there's four ornamental gardens and a circular walkway in the middle. So it looks like it's quite an elaborate house. And this is where John uh, Moultrie immigrated. He was a doctor and where he raised his, uh, his sons. All of his children were uh, prestigious South Carolinians. And they were all boys, matter of fact. Just wanted to show this map again. Here's Windsor Hill. The Moultrie home was right over here. And so here was the road to Goose Creek. The Windsor Hill had an avenue which traces Ashley Phosphate Road today over to what we know as Rivers Avenue. And they also had a road that followed the parish line to Ashley River. William Moultrie is unforgettable as the hero of Sullivan's Island where he led a small band of stubborn artillerymen who pummeled British warships attempting to breach Charleston Harbor on June 28, 1776. The Ro Royal Navy returned, turned away, granting a stunning victory to the Patriots and providing much needed confidence to representatives from the far-flung colonies who signed the Declaration of Independence a few days hence. Soon after that declaration, the South Carolina Provincial Congress adopted the South Carolina Constitution and resolved itself into the General Assembly of the Infant State, vesting executive authority in the President and Legislative Council and granting the Governor power to command 12 regiments. Colonel William Moultrie commanded one regiment and one artillery company. The General's son, William Moultrie, was also a patriot. He was a 23-year-old second lieutenant in his father's regiment and married Hannah Ansley during the heat of the war. His bride was heir to prosperous Windsor Hill, and William the Younger Moultrie was rich and famous as, to Hannah, as he and Hannah reared four girls and three boys. William Moultrie the Younger earned an impressive service record. He was a second lieutenant in the second regiment in 1775 and arose to the rank of captain before the Revolutionary War ended and served the House of Representatives for the new state of South Carolina in 1781. He succumbed to fever in 1796 and died on the hill at the age of 44. Hannah, his inconsolable wife, laid him to rest at the edge of the crest, 150 yards from the home, but within sight from the portico. She immediately ordered masons to erect a vault. The Brailsford family. Eliza Charlotte Moultrie, daughter of William and Hannah, wed Dr. Edward Brailsford, a successful merchant. They preferred city life, but the Brailsfords returned to the Hilltop Cemetery 11 times to bury family members. Alexander Moutry attended his mother's internment, and during the solemn graveside conversation in 1798, General Moutry expressed to Alexander his desire to be buried aside his son William and his second wife. Major General William Moutrie died on Thursday, September the 27th, 1805, in a small two-story clapboard home on the corner of Magazine and Logan Streets in the jail-bound section of Charleston. As was the practice of that day, city officials rented small houses near the Charleston jail to sequester people imprisoned for unpaid debts. The aging 74-year-old warrior lived jail-bound while officials investigated his financial insolvency. As was the common expectation 30 years before, he selfishly signed vouchers to supply his hungry infantry and artillerymen during the Revolutionary War. He's a nice looking guy, isn't he? Handsome fella. 
And there is an uh, artistic rendering by John Blake of the Battle of Sullivan's Island. The loved ones interred the general next to his son in compliance with his earnest request, and the exhausted procession retired in silence and without marking the grave. Without a gravestone, the family hoped the creditors, that creditors would be unable to find the site nor seize the body and hold it for family ransom, as was the sordid practice of that day. The next morning, the Charleston Courier newspaper provided a glowing testimonial of the general and reported most honorable and respectable burial, but gave no hint of the location. A.M. Pepper brought Abraham Young, his slave, to Windsor Hill in 1840 to oversee the land, prevent poaching of game, and keep away cattle rustlers and timber thieves. Young and his loved ones subsisted on corn, hogs, chicken, and greens. They worked unsupervised and unaided by, for decades with few white visitors except once a year on the 4th of July. On that day, quote, men traveled from Charleston, end quote, to, quote, walk around the grave and make speeches. And this was a drawing in the early 20th century, and still Windsor Hill was an important an important place, and it's, it's shown here on this rendering after the railroads went in. One traveler noted, quote, the elevation on which Windsor Hill stood was in full view of the much used highway, a fitting place of repose for a man of his natural stature. However, by 1875, the grave was lost, and family members couldn't find the grave. There was chest high grass and weeds. And although it was an important place and they knew that the cemetery was there and, and held the uh, remains of uh, several generations of people that lived on the hill, the grave was, uh, was lost for decades. In 1875, the track was deeded from I. Douglas Burns to Dr. Maynard Edward Carrier. Carrier. And this is just a, uh, the paperwork, but it, my laser isn't working right now, but down here on the second line it says that it's in Goose Creek Parish and partly in the parish of St. George. And so subsequent landowners bought land and expanded the size of the plantation. That's why I wanted to show that. Three years later, 1878, Dr. Maynard Edward Carrier deeded land to his third wife, Elizabeth C. Carrier. She conveyed all but 50 acres of Windsor Hill to J. Adger Smith. H.L. Coster became owner and left in a trust for his children. Four expeditions searched for the final resting place of Major General Mutri during the 19th and 20th century without success until the Institute of Anthropology and Archaeology at the University of South Carolina conducted a study at Windsor Hill in 1976 and 1977. Then Windsor Hill was designated a historic archaeological site because of the brick foundations of the house, kitchen, barracks, and of course the family cemetery. The team moved bone slivers and earthen remnants of General Mutri to Fort Mutri on Sullivan's Island where the National Park Service continued to protect them. The team buried the family remains at the St. James Goose Creek Church. This is his uh, marker at the uh, National Park at Sullivan's Island. And here is a photograph I just took uh, the other day at the St. James Goose Creek Church. This shows the Brailsful, Brailsford, Ansley, and Mutri stones. We also have uh, the remnants of, of others, uh, slave, slave families, uh, certainly the young family, the African-American family, his, his folks are buried too, and when they ex excavated, it was pretty difficult and I think impossible to dis distinguish between one body and another after all those years. William Moultrie. Now, on this, it says Major, uh, Major General William Moultrie. This is his stone at the St. James Goose Creek Church. And this is his son, and he's given the rank of major, where uh, I, the records show that he was a captain. So inexplicably, he was promoted to a major somewhere. And uh, that just happens. The farther away from Goose Creek I get, the better my reputation seems to be sometimes. <laughs> <you know? laughs> Maybe that's what it is. And uh, here's our beautiful Goose Creek Church that I had to sneak in here. Because this was the home parish of uh, the Moutry family and the uh, Brailsford family and the Childs family and the Ansley family and the uh, uh, Alexander Young family. 
This was their home church. General William Mutry was buried at Windsor Hill next to his son at his earnest request. That was in the family Bible. And a friend of mine uh, uh, collected these artifacts at Windsor Hill back in the early 1980s. And uh, I hope I'm not admitting too much information, but uh, he, he snuck me up there about 1980 after they did the archaeological work. And we looked around and poked around trying to get, the, get a feeling for the grave site. But these are some things that he found over the years. And I love these little marbles. It has everything from a musket shot to marbles. It kind of tells the whole story. And here's some bottles. And this is what it looks like today. A beautiful place to build homes and businesses. And it is high ground still. And uh, it's just uh, 1.3 miles from where we stand today. And uh, I hope that maybe, uh, I hope I'm not being too precocious, precocious I think is the word, but maybe when that's developed, that marker might be moved to where the cemetery was. That might be even more appropriate than where it stands. But uh, I want you to notice, this is General Washington, but you notice the, uh, around his neck he has the gorget, which is a throwback to the days of armor. And that's on our flag. Some folks think it's the crescent moon, and if you do, that's just fine. You can think it's the crescent moon. I happen to think it's a gorget, and there it is, hanging as a sign of aristocracy and, and a sign of the officer rank. And it's also on General Mucci's battle flag. That was the gorget, the insignia they wore in their uniform, and it's on our beloved South Carolina flag. I don't know how in the world I got so lucky. I moved to South Carolina by accident to this day, and Keith, you did too, didn't you? And to this day, how did we get that lucky? I don't get it. I just, God was looking out for us both and let us move to this wonderful place. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. At this time